Now, there's, there's questions on screen too, and, and that's if you have a question, you can text that in, and then I answer them on social media in the middle of the week. So that's why that's there. Um, but just don't ask, why do you sound like that? Okay, ha ha, I'm sick, okay? But uh, if you have a question on the teaching, we'll, we'll put that up. Um, as you go into 2020, whether you are a resolutions person or not, because some of you are very pro-resolution, and some of you are like, I don't do that. I know who I am, and I'm going to do the same thing, uh, or it never works. It, regardless of where you land on that, there is optimism. There is this excitement as you go into it because there's this newness, and, and, and there's this wonder about what's going to happen uh, and all these things. But you really kind of feel like I get kind of a, a restart. And, and so as we go into that, uh, I, I think it's important as we talk about really our natural giftings and, and the spiritual giftings, um, I think it's important that we, we start with one common denominator uh, that hopefully we can agree on. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 16, and we're going to be bouncing a little bit today, so, you know, be flexible. In Colossians 1, 16, it says, For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20, it says, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you have been bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. David said in Psalm 139, 14, I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. And so at the end of the day, we, we, we have to, uh, one, if, if we're a Jesus follower, we have to acknowledge that that's true, right? So, so the reality is, I am created, my, my emotions, my physical, my spiritual being is created with a purpose and design by an almighty powerful God. And so that's our common denominator as we go into this, is we are created by God. And as, as we move forward, we got to ask, so what are the ramifications of that? What does that mean? Well, that means uh, that I belong to him. <laughs> so how I use who I am either communicates that it's mine or it's his. It's either his plans and purposes or it's my plans and purposes. And a, as we talk about natural and these spiritual giftings, we've got to start with that, that we are all created by an almighty, powerful creator, God. You know, sometimes uh, when it comes to our gifting, um, and, and sometimes we'll go, man, we're like, okay, so, so I feel like this is happening. Where did this gifting come from? What is this about? And, and we can be so consumed with trying to identify what, what is happening versus actually just embracing the gift, and utilizing the gift that you've been given. Whether it's a natural gift uh, or whether it's a spiritual gift. Either way, it's an opportunity to receive the gift and to utilize the gift. Um, when my boys were opening their Christmas gifts, and maybe they will later in life, but at this stage, not one of them turned to me after opening a gift, being excited about the gift, and saying, now who got me this again? Who gave this to me? Not one of them asked that. They were literally like consumed with the gift, excited about the gift, and I think sometimes we can actually overanalyze the gift and we don't actually just embrace and move forward and allow God to use the gift in our lives. And as we talk about this, like, like, like this is what's awesome. Every single one of us has some sort of innate talent or gifting. Every single one of us. Now, you may not think of yourself as a talented person, but if you look at yourself closely, you'll discover that there is some ability that you possess. And, 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 and this, is, this is not like just, oh, if you're a Jesus follower. No, every single person has been given natural talent or natural abilities. And, and it, it's a combination of, of genetics. It's a combination of, of, of your surroundings, right? Like, like we've all seen the ridiculously talented family. Maybe you're them. And, and it's literally uh, they're great at something, and then their kid is great at something. Their other kid is great, and it just keeps going. And you're like, ah, you know? Um, and, and, and like, like I look at uh, Scott and Marisa France, one of our elders, and his wife, and they sing, and their kids are ridiculous musicians already. And, and I'm looking at my boys like, hey, what's going on? And, 
And, and they're looking at me like, yeah, what's going on, right? <laughs> I, we, that's not happening. And, uh, and yet they have that. Or it can be the environment that you grow up in, right? Like, like some of you, uh, y- you were raised a certain way in a certain surrounding. And so you have more natural giftings or talents or things that just come easier to you, right? Like, like my, my wife's side, they build. They can just build anything. Like they just build it. Um, if, there's, if there's a cabinet, if there's a piece of furniture, they can build it. She married me. I can only build like Legos. So, so is, is, is she, that, that was the environment she grew up in. She married me. And, and I came from a different environment. And so my giftings and talents are different because of that environment versus the environment that I would have had in her family. And so we all take that uh, into our lives. And, and here's the beauty of this. Because sometimes I find that in churches, we will so highlight everything about spiritual gifting that will literally pretend or negate that every single person has natural giftings. Every single person has natural giftings and abilities that God has given them. Like, it's not like, oh, that's natural? Ugh, well, that's not good. No, God has gifted you that. And you see it. You see it all throughout our culture. You see people with natural gifts and talents using those things to spread and bring the gospel to other people, to bless other people. Some of you who, who like, you, have, you are gifted vocally. You've gone to a hospital and, and, and you sang to somebody and it blessed them. You have made something for somebody. You, you've brought, you're a gift giver. Uh, God has blessed you and you've done that. There's just certain things. Uh, you've been given a platform maybe by a natural talent or ability and you're using that to reach people. And so we see that and, and every person has a talent. Every person has ability. And, 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 and we have different levels of that, right? And I, I think for some of us, like, we, we haven't found our natural talent. We didn't find it until later in life. But as we think about it, it's an opportunity to steward what God has given to us. And that's just something he throws in to the pot for you being born. What we see also is a thing called spiritual gifts. Now, when I heard spiritual gifts growing up, um, and I grew up in the church, and, uh, and, and what I say, uh, it is, listen, it's the truth. My parents are here, so, like, I can't lie, okay? Um, pastors sometimes lie, not this one. So um, when I would hear people talk about spiritual gifts, a lot of times they would talk about it in relation to their ability to sing or to teach or, or perform a certain task. And, and a lot of times I would walk away going, man, that seems like just a normal thing. Like that doesn't seem like a spiritual thing. It just seems like a natural thing. I know other people that don't follow Jesus, they can sing really well, uh, they can lead really well, or they teach uh, in, a, in an amazing way, and they don't follow Jesus. And, and it wasn't until I really surrendered my life to Jesus and started following him that I started to see giftings and things emerge in my life that had not been there previously before. And it, and, and it was during that that I started to realize and see the difference between a natural gift and a spiritual gift. And, and, and so, um, I, because here's the reality, like, like when I first, and now, I never wanted to be a pastor. I've said that many times. Um, and like, I didn't set out. That wasn't the goal. Like, I saw what happens to pastors. My dad's a pastor. I saw you speak and everybody critiques you. I don't want that. <laughs> that just doesn't look fun at all. So why would I sign up for that? Um, but I remember when God really clarified and defined as I was getting my Bible degree that, that, and started to reveal these spiritual giftings in my life, it was when I was asked to speak at the college that I was at. And they asked me to speak, and I remember, and, and Wesley, who planted this church, he was in the front row, and my other best friend, who's an elder at a church in Bend, he was in the other. And as I was speaking, they were not sitting there going, no, they were going, because, and I, and I was up here going, what's happening? Because it wasn't a natural thing. It didn't just go, oh, yeah, Steve, you're that guy. Like, no. Um, and, and it was then that I realized there is a major difference between natural gifting and spiritual gifting. Because God does something, right? 
Um, Paul describes spiritual gifting in three different places, and we're going to look at, and read through those. And this is not meant to be a survey of all the spiritual gifts. It's not that time. Uh, it's really the purpose of what we're trying to do is to, is to look at these spiritual giftings and evaluate our lives and ask, how are we stewarding this? In 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7 through 11, it says, and Paul's writing this to the specific audience, it says, To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by one and the same Spirit who apportions to each one individually as he wills. Now Romans, Romans chapter 12, verse 3, Apostle Paul again is writing to another audience and he says in verse 3, For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Let us use them, if prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. And then lastly, in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 10 through 12, again Paul is writing, and he says, He who descended is the one who also ascends far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ. So we get purpose. We get all these different spiritual giftings. And, and, and the reality is that spiritual gifts are given to all believers by the Holy Spirit at the time they place their faith in Jesus for the forgiveness of their sins. So in that moment, at that time, the Holy Spirit gives to a new believer the spiritual gifts he desires that believer to have, and the Holy Spirit gives that as he wills. In other words, like you, you receive gifts at that point, and then, as, and then the rest of your life as he wills. So in other words, um, he can expand. He can give more gifting. He could start you off with a spiritual gift here, and then all of a sudden, you've got a different one. Or you've got another one. Or there's a particular situation you find yourself in, an event, an opportunity, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit may say, open your mouth and, 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 and preach. And you're like, uh-uh. I don't do that. I took the spiritual gift test, not high on evangelism. You know that. And he says, but you also read where I distribute as I will, and right now you're sitting next to this person, and you're going to be shocked at what I do through your mouth. And, 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 and so a lot of times I find that we either limit what the Holy Spirit can do or wants to do, or we place ourselves in a box and we totally ignore the fact that, that as he wills, he distributes gifts. And, 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 and we see this all, through, <coughs> all throughout Scripture. And, and it, it should encourage us. <clears throat> People can be very talented without having the gift of the Holy Spirit, right? But believers not only have natural talents, <clears throat> but they are also gifted by God. A non-natural gift that is a spiritual gift that could be something totally different than anything you've been a part of or thought about. And it could be that, or, and this is when it gets even more exciting, is he can take a gift that you've already had naturally and then he can bring a supernatural purpose to it or he can give it a supernatural makeover. And we, we see this all throughout Scripture. We see it all throughout. Um, like, like Esther. Esther in um, Esther 2, uh, verse 7. It talks about her natural physical beauty. Okay? So Esther is this beautiful, she is naturally beautiful. 
okay? It wasn't like she believed in God and then he was like, like that. No, Esther was naturally beauty. And then what does God do with that beauty? God takes her physical beauty, that natural beauty, and then uses that, and not just that, but uses that really in a way, takes it, and then in a supernatural way, from her natural beauty, causes her to save the nation. Now, don't go home and get in front of your mirror and be like, and your spouse walks in, what are you doing? This is what's going to save the nation, you know? I already tried it. It doesn't work. So, um, but we see a very natural thing that God then takes and uses in a supernatural way to save the nation. When, when you look at other examples, like, like, like there's... Um, Asaph, this guy that some of you are like, who is that? Well, he wrote 12 of the Psalms. This, this guy was a contemporary of David. We read about him in First Chronicles. He was a very accomplished and talented musician. And God takes his musical ability and then uses that in an incredible way where he's in the Psalms, where we're reading that, we're being blessed by that. God is using that and taking that ability and stretching it. Uh, in Exodus chapter 31, uh, verses 1 through 6, and Listen, there's going to be some weird names, but just hang with me. In in Exodus 31, verse 1, it says, and and God is, is, is talking to Moses. He has a task. He wants Moses to build the tabernacle for him. And it says this in, in Exodus 31, verse 1. The Lord said to Moses, See, I have called by my name Bezalel, the son of Uri, son of Ur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God with ability and intelligence, with knowledge and all craftsmanship to devise artistic designs to work in gold, silver, and bronze, in cutting stones for setting, and in carving wood to work in every craft. And behold, I have appointed with him Aholiab, the son of Ahizamach of the tribe of Dan. And I have given to all able men ability that they may make all that I have commanded you. How amazing is that? So he's got this incredible task. He says, this is what I want done. You're going to build a tabernacle for me. And and then all of a sudden he starts walking him through how it's going to happen, what it needs to look like. And then he tells Moses this. And this is so exciting and this is so important for us because once again, I, I think for so many of us, we limit what the Holy Spirit could do through our lives through the grid of the things that are like the three most popular. And what we see is him saying, I have, through the power of the Holy Spirit, on these individuals' lives, I have given them giftings in woodwork, in crafting, in arts, in, 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 all the, in design, in all these things. And I have supplied that through the power of the Holy Spirit upon their lives so that they can accomplish this. What do you think that must have been like for them? I mean, they're literally building stuff and they're like, how am I doing this? How did you do that? I don't know. And, and, and we see God taking, now these are already naturally gifted builders, craftsmen, and all that, and we see the Holy Spirit take a very natural for us, a normal, unless you're me, gift, and take it, and then, in a supernatural way, use it, the power of the Holy Spirit, to build a tabernacle. Incredible. So you may find your natural talent in a particular area is greatly multiplied. When God gives you spiritual gifts. We see that like uh, in Acts 7, 22, it talks about Moses um, before he's like Moses, leader of, of all the nation. And it says in Acts 7, 22, and Moses was instructed in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and he was mighty in his words and deeds. Okay, he was adopted by Pharaoh's daughter and he was trained very well and, and educated and smart and a great leader, communicator. Before that, and so what God did was what? God just increased what was already there. And, and to operate and to fulfill a specific task. We look at David. David was incredibly talented, naturally. He was an accomplished musician. Uh, we, 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 he's called a Israel singer of songs in, in 2 Samuel 23.1. His bravery, his musical talent, it was noticed very early in his life as, as an adolescent. In, uh, in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 17, verse 34, as, as David is literally telling Saul, I should fight Goliath, he says this. He's just a youngster. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. 
And when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. And if he arose against me, I caught him by his beard. This is a lion. It's not like his brother's beard. And struck him and killed him. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. For he has defied the armies of the living God. And David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. And so we see, even at an early age, David has incredible talent and qualities. He can obviously hunt, okay? So if you're a hunter, there you go. There's your plug. But we, we obviously see that he was able to do things like that, and he was gifted, and then God took what was there, the musical, but all those things, and then took it beyond what he could have imagined. Daniel, it's the same thing, right? Daniel, we, we, went, we just went through a series in the book of Daniel, and, and we looked at Daniel chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. It talks about how Daniel was hand-selected as a young teen boy. He stood out when they are being exiled out to Babylon. Daniel stood out, not only from his family, but his demeanor, his physical appearance, his knowledge, his wisdom, all of that. And what do we see God does with that? He just increases it. He, gives, he, he, he then intervenes and does way more than what Daniel had naturally. And we see that increase even throughout his life. We see that, that his gifting actually increases. You know, Paul, he talks about himself in, in Philippians uh, chapter 3, uh, verses 4 through 6. Uh, he talks about who he was before uh, his conversion. He says, though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh, also, if anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews. I'm American of Americans. <laughs> as to the law of Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. In Galatians 1.14, he talks about himself, how he was so far advanced beyond his Jewish contemporaries who were his age. Okay, so, so he was incredibly successful, driven, zealous uh, before God got a hold of his life. After God got a hold of his life, God just tweaked him a little bit. He, he turned his focus and then, through the power of the Holy Spirit, just blew up Paul's life with that gifting and took it beyond anything he could have comprehended or imagined. And so we see uh, this, this happening and in our lives and, and, and throughout the Bible. And I, I think sometimes people ask, well, what? I don't know what my gifting is. I mean, that sounds cool, but I don't know what it is. Like, what, what do I do? Like, 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 where do I fit in all of this? And, 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 and I think it's kind of, sometimes it's a good question to ask, but then all of a sudden it becomes a rut, doesn't it? Because sometimes we can live in that. And then we can find comfortability in that. And maybe 2019, that's kind of what happened. You know, maybe you didn't really find your fit or, or you didn't really find what is my gifting, my, my, my spiritual gifting. And, and yeah, I've got some natural talent in this or that. But, but, but here's the reality for you, okay? Like when you went into 2020, especially those of you who like have some physical goals that are new that you're starting in 2020, maybe you've already broken the rule, but... You're motivated physically. What, what are you going to do? Well, and, and, and how did you build out what you're going to accomplish to bring about that physical transformation you hope to have? Well, you're going to attempt to do some things to figure out what your body responds to, aren't you? You're not going to sit there and pray for the right meal plan. You're not going to sit there and pray, God, I, like just reveal the physical exercise route that I need to have, and then I will walk to that treadmill. Like, like, no, what, what have you done? You have started to pursue things in order to identify what is the best way for me to physically have the response I need that my body needs. You go after that, right? And it's the same way when it comes to our gifting. And I tell people this a lot. Like, like if you have no idea what your spiritual gifting is, there's, there's a couple of things. One, there are, I made a joke about it, but there are spiritual gift tests that you can take that help you identify that. The second thing is this. What are you doing with your natural gifting? 
right? Like, like sometimes we could come in here and be so fixated on how we talk about the spiritual gifting and what the Holy Spirit did, but we totally ignore our natural giftings and the reality that just maybe by you utilizing your natural giftings, God is going to show you your spiritual giftings. And so, and so we, put it into, we put it into action. We utilize what we do know. <coughs> so I die up here on stage. And, <laughs> and we, we move forward. <coughs> I may make some noises to sound like a middle school boy, but that's cool. We just hang with me. Um, but you have to be active. You have to be activated. As you go into this time, into this season, as you go into 2020, um, it's, it's a mindset and it's, and it's a demeanor that, that I'm, not, I'm not just going to have this be a situation that, that, I, that I sit and, and I allow God to move and to work and all these things. Like, if he's called me here, he's called me to invest in this, that he has something specific in my life that he's called me to. If I'm a Jesus follower, there's no way around it. It's true. And, 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 and just me like, oh, I don't know what that is, that, that doesn't, like, excuse it. That should excite you to find it. And, and we see that these spiritual gifts, they, they increase as our maturity in our relationship with God increases. And it kind of results in Ephesians 4, 14 through 16, when it says, So that we may no longer be children, tossed to and fro by the waves, and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each it is equipped when, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. So, so we see that these, these spiritual gifts, they're given to us all. They're given to all of us uh, to the work of the service, to the building up of the body of Christ, to the building up of this image, this picture of, of, of the body of Christ. When we think about this local picture of ecclesia, it should be a picture of the body of of Christ. And, and so we are all, all of us, if we are a Jesus follower, called to use these giftings that he's given to us. And, and I think sometimes uh, in, in a context uh, within a local church, we will go, well, I don't have this title or this ranking. And every church has different titles, right? But I, I don't have that title. That sounds like a big title. I don't have that. Or, or nobody's promoted me to this or that. Like, like are you just going to wait for that? Like, well, I don't, I'm, I'm not a pastor, so I can't minister to them. Like, like here's the reality. Like, what, one of the most powerful scenes I see in the Old Testament uh, that changes the course of Moses' leadership is in Exodus chapter 18. Exodus chapter 18, Moses is the guy. He has led them out of, Israel, out of Egypt and, and, and incredible story, miracles, all of this, and his father-in-law comes. Yeah. Father-in-law comes with Moses' wife and his kids, and his father-in-law comes, and Moses is so excited to share with his father-in-law, like you all are if your father-in-law comes and you've been really successful. You're like, yeah, I married, yeah, you got me. And, and he shares with them all that God did that brought him out there and all this. And so Jethro, his father-in-law, is observing this. He's praising God. He's sacrificing with him all these things. Now Jethro has not been given the keys to the kingdom. It's not now Jethro's turn to lead it. It's not, Jethro isn't on the board, okay? Jethro is the father-in-law who came, and as he's watching, he sees something very unhealthy. He sees that people are lined up all day long bringing their problems to Moses. And as he observes this, and as God reveals this, he then pulls Moses aside, and he literally says, this is what the Bible says. It is not good what you're doing. <laughs> it's not good. You're, you're not going to last. You're not going to make it. And, 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 he, and he talks to him about what he needs to do administratively, leadership-wise. And we see Jethro with this incredible gifting speaking that into Moses' life. And it changes how Moses leads the nation of Israel. That's incredible. Once again, Jethro doesn't have this significant title or this place. But we see incredible change happen through his influence. And we are all, as Christians, we are all called to play an active part 
in the furtherance of the gospel. We are all called and equipped to be a part of the work of the ministry. And this is when you find fulfillment. It really is in your journey with Jesus. I, there is a fulfillment that comes when, when you are operating in your spiritual gifts. That, that, and some of you know this. You've experienced this. And it is an incredible feeling. It is so worshipful. It, it, it is the realization that God is doing something that I never could have done for myself. And when we think about like, like our job as, as church leaders, it's to cultivate that. It's to stir that up in this church. It's not to like, how do we like put a lid on that? No, we want to stir that up. We want to encourage you uh, uh, to think this way, to pursue those giftings. Because why? Because that's what builds up the body of Christ. That's what grows the body of Christ. So if I'm like, oh no, 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 you should all just da 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 look the same and da 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 Well, guess what? Now we're hurting the body of Christ. And, and for some of us, we are limiting what, what we want as far as spiritual gifting, and we're saying, God, it needs to be this or this or this. And so these are the giftings, God, that I am praying for, that I'm going after. But the reality is this. It's a picture of the body. If I was up here speaking to you and I had three eyeballs, you guys wouldn't go, man, Steve is so much more complete than me. Would you? No, you go, What's wrong with him? But some of us were like, we're like, no, I want to be, I want to be another, another eyeball. I want to be, I want to be another finger. I want to be a t- like all these things. And but the reality is, when you think about your body, your body has so many different parts, and and some are more visible, and some are not as visible. Some of the most important are internal, and you don't even want to see that. And, and and some of you are vital, like like go stub your big toe. And tell me, tell me what happens. It's like crippling, right? And you may be called to be the big toe, and no one's going to see you. You're going to be in a shoe, but guess what? You're going to play a huge role, huge role. But so many times we're like, oh, well, this and, and that, and, 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 we, and we just build this box. And God is like, let's stop it. Open the cupboard up. There's so much more I want to do with you, and, and, and you're like praying, oh, this way for the long haul, and you're not even open-minded to the fact that I may want to do something right now. I may want to change course. I may want to give you something different right now. I may want to highlight something. I may want you to pray this way right now. I may want you to, to, to speak, to share this right now, and I may want you to build something right now. And, and so I, I just think this is so important for us. This is such an important message for us as we go into 2020. And it doesn't matter because whenever we talk about natural giftings or talents, what do we do? We look around, right? We start scrolling through social media. We start comparing. We, and we go, well, yeah, I'm talented. Listen, there is always somebody more talented. There just is. There always is. And so if you're like, man, I don't, I don't feel like I measure up. Well, none of us really measure up. But guess what? We are all naturally gifted. We're talented. And remember, God uses the weak to confound the strong. Look at Jesus. There was a reason our Christmas Eve gathering was called unforeseen. Okay, Jesus' life didn't align with the expectation of of what uh, he didn't, one, come from where he should have, and two, his lineage and everything else did not align with how they wanted it. He didn't look the part. He didn't, all these things that they were, that they wanted. We see his followers, the same thing, the same accusation. And then you even look in the Old Testament at the nation of Israel, and as the nation of Israel, God's chosen people is going out and entering into the promised land and all that, were people going, man, What an incredible nation. Wow, I'm afraid of them. No. You know what people were saying? They were afraid of Israel's God. They were talking about Israel's God. That's important. Because that's kind of what we see all throughout Scripture how he operates. And so it's not when you look at this do you go, man, these people just stand off the charts. More so you see, man, look what he did in spite of them. Look at this movement he created in spite of him. When when you look at Peter, look at what he did in spite of him. 
all these things. And, and that's kind of the, that's the reality. I don't know why. I don't know what it is about our culture in, in, at this time in history where we think we have to be all of this in order for God to just intervene and do something supernatural with our lives. But we need to stop. And we need to embrace the reality that, 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 that God has specific talents and giftings for you right now to utilize, to take hold of. And maybe 2020 is the time. The question is, is your talents yours or God's? Is your spiritual giftings yours or is it God's? Are you making your giftings available for God to use? Are you positioning yourself to be ready when it happens? Right? How many times are we just not even allowing God the opportunity to do something? We've already written the story. We've already written the book with that person, with that situation, with that church, with that leadership, with that friend, with that family member. And, and we've already closed the door. And, and, and the reality is it could be a single moment. It could be a prayer. It could be an event. It could be a project. It could be a unique opportunity. But the question is, and you hear churches, you will hear pastors say this, it is about availability, not ability. It's how it is with God every time. And he's looking for that from us. And the question for us, church, in 2020, if we really want to individually experience all that God has for us, and you want to really stretch out and, and, and have this incredible year that only he could have, have told the story of, if our church really wants that, if we really want to expand, and I tell you what, I'm praying for some big things for this church. It will not happen if we don't do this. It just won't. And it all comes back to, to one thing, though, because no individual believer can bring forth any sort of lasting spiritual results simply because of his or her giftedness or natural talents. It's the connection with Jesus that matters. John 15, 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I am him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. And that's the reminder. But it, it's got to start with him. And when you start with him, that's when everything else starts to open up. And, and that's when you find yourself willing. That's when you find yourself more available because he's directing it. It's not you. And I, I, I think we've, we've done enough with us directing how our gifting should be utilized. And I think we've done enough about saying, God, I want these particular gifts, and we're not even open to the reality that he may just want to absolutely rock your world with something totally different. And here's why it's exciting for me. This is so exciting for me because, once again, uh, one, I'm a visual thinker. So I literally imagine you guys in this room, those listening to the podcast, I imagine what it would be like if we just started to pray this way, if we started to actually do this. If we actually were like, man, I, I don't know if I, but God, I'm available. I'm willing. I'll go. Like, just what would happen? What would happen with this church? But it starts with Jesus. And so let's start with him. And let's be open and available. And let's move forward and pursue through the natural, through the spiritual gifting that he's given you. And let's just, let's ask for big things in 2020 and move forward. What an amazing opportunity this is going to be for you and for our church. Amen? Let me pray.